Hi, got a great book for you today. It's educational. It's about a trailblazing Canadian named Lillian Bland. And, she, and the subtitle is Amazing Aviatrix. Who knows what that means? It means someone who likes to fly, specifically a female. It was written by Haley Healy and illustrated by Kamiko Fraser, both of which live um, on or near Vancouver Island. This is really current. It was just published in 2023. Oh, first I want to show you these end papers. These are the illustrations. You can see the seagulls there. The seagulls like to fly, like aviatrixes. And end papers at the beginning of the book and also at the end. Anyway, let's get started. Lillian was born a long time ago in Southern England. Her mother died when she was young. Lillian spent her childhood traveling the world with her father. More than anything, she wanted to be free and live her own way. When she was older, she moved to Ireland and got a job as a sports journalist. She wrote about racing cars, hunting on horseback, and how to fall off a horse without getting hurt. That's a good thing to know. There she is with her father. There she is being a sports illustrator. You can see that she was dressed in clothes from a long time ago. In those days, most women rode horses side saddle. That means they had both legs on the same side of the horse. It was considered more proper. But Lillian insisted on riding like the men. Not everybody liked this. One day, a man on the street saw Lillian riding her horse. He told others to throw stones at Lillian for riding, not riding the proper way. But instead, people took Lillian's side. They cheered for her as she rode by. Good for Lillian. Lillian loved trying new things. She wanted to fly like the black-backed seagulls soaring over the ocean. She dreamed of flying a plane, but she just couldn't find anyone to teach her. There she is on the seashore with all the seagulls. So she set to work designing and building her own plane. Using her uncle's workshop, she used spruce, bamboo, and canvas to build a glider plane with 20-foot wings. She bought a lightweight engine and put everything together. She changed the design again and again till she, before she was satisfied. Lillian named her plane Mayfly because it may or may not fly. Mayfly was similar to the first plane ever flown, which was built by the Wright brothers seven years earlier. But Mayfly was Lillian's very own design. She is drawing and designing her plane. One day in August, it, it was finally time to see if Mayfly would lift off. Lillian launched off the ground. It flew. Lillian soared and admired the fields below from a new view. She had never felt so free. Lillian was the first woman in the world to design, build, and fly her own plane. Look at her up there flying with the seagulls. Good for her. After her first flight, Lillian kept working on Mayfly. She made several more flights. She even built biplanes and gliders and sold them to others. But after a while, Lillian grew restless are working on her plane, the engines. 
she became more interested in cars than planes. She started running a car dealership and married a man named Charles, but she still didn't feel free. With Charles. She didn't feel free. Hmm. So Lillian and Charles moved to Canada from Ireland. Remember that they were living in Ireland. They bought some land deep in the wilderness of northern Vancouver Island in a place called Quatsino Sound. This was the traditional territories of the Quatsino First Nation, who had lived there for thousands of years. There she is. Her and Charles looking at Quatsino Sound, lighthouse, seagulls again. Lily and Charles' new home was far from any big city. No roads went there. To get there, Lillian and Charles had to travel by a big steamship. On the way, they passed a rocky island with a lighthouse. Even though the wind and the waves and the light shone through, Lillian spotted sea lions and seabirds. The birds reminded her, her of the gulls that had made her want to build and fly her very own plane. Remember? All right. At their new house, Lillian and Charles built a cabin. At their new home, Lillian and Charles built a new cabin, a farm and gardens. They had a daughter named Patricia. They called themselves homesteaders. There's their cabin. Being a homesteader was hard work. They had to clear large stumps out of way to make gardens. They hauled endless buckets of water from the river and spent hours chopping wood to keep their cabin warm. It rained more in Quatsino Sound than Lillian thought possible. Every night as she lay in bed, wolves howled outside the cabin. There's the wolves howling. Can you imagine being so isolated like that? When she wasn't working, you know, chopping wood and carrying water and all those things, Lillian found time to take photographs of her life as a homesteader. She photographed cows and goats in the fields, zucchini and tomatoes in their gardens, and the boats that was used to catch fish to, and to get around. Look at all those photos that she took. I think they're in an archive somewhere, those photos. Lillian loved being far away from cities and crowds, but living in a forest with no roads, there was one thing she, that she missed. She loved cars and driving. Remember, she had a car dealership? <laughs> there's, there she is driving a car. So one summer, Lillian, Charles, Patricia, and their pet, Blue Jay, took a road trip to California. Lillian drove their model their Ford Model T. To Lillian, the open road was freedom. I'm guessing they bought that car on the mainland, not Vancouver Island. Just guessing. Years later, Patricia died from a disease called tetanus. Very sad. Lillian was so heartbroken that she decided to move back to England by herself. She lived in a big house on a cliff where she watched the waves and the beaches below. She gardened, painted, and played the stock market. As the years went by, most people forgot about Lillian's early adventures, her journalism career, and her daring horseback riding, and her amazing flight in Mayfly. But nearly 100 years after her first flight, a few people began to celebrate Lillian's memory. There she is painting by the seesaw shore. Today, Lillian is remembered as the first woman to design, build, and fly a plane. She is featured in museums in Ireland and Canada. A park in Northern Ireland is named for her. It was a big, it has a big metal model of Mayfly to celebrate her bravery 
and freedom. Lillian lived during a time when women didn't have much freedom or as many opportunities as men. But Lillian didn't let this or anything hold her back from living life her own way. She never stopped trying to find her freedom. There she is with her plan. Well, that's the end of the story, but there is two more pages. I won't go over many of the details here, but this is a timeline from when she was born in 1878 all the way to when she died in 1971. That would be at 93 years old. And it has some interesting other dates in here about when she flew her plane and when the Wright brothers flew their plane too. Anyway, this is a great little book if you want to know more about um, women in the um, you know early 1900s and an aviatrix, someone who flies her own plane. Um, I picked this up at Window Seat Books in Nanaimo. And uh, it's a great little bookstore, but maybe you could also find this in your bookstore or in your library. I'm sure you can. I hope you enjoy it. Bye for now.